I just thought I was the coolest kid ever and I could do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted and you know I did a lot of things I regret. It's so hard to find places where kids know people really care about them. You have to understand who you are, you have to understand your strengths and your weaknesses and those things are going to be tested always. Coming from a past that wasn't pretty, um, that wasn't idyllic, being pregnant when I was 16, having gone through multiple different sexual abuses. I needed some type of affirmation. I needed somebody to tell me, um, hey, here's the way to go, and, and you're doing okay. Without Lipscomb, I'd probably be not playing baseball, not in school, and probably doing some of the immature, stupid stuff back in my hometown that I used to do when I was younger because this place has definitely guided me to a, a different place in life that I really want to be at. This past fall, I was uh, sitting in my room doing some homework and I got an email about a mission trip. Kind of just settled my mind, I was like, I'm going to do this. Like, don't just say it, just, just go out and do it. And I told my parents about it and of course, my dad was happy, my mom was extremely upset and was like, you're not leaving and started crying and she's a, she's definitely an emotional person but in a good way and, uh, and I went down on that trip and I talked to uh, a kid on the soccer team, uh, Kyle Erickson, on the plane. Never met him before, talked from uh, Atlanta to Tegucigalpa. So I kind of told him, I was like, you know, how awesome would it be to be baptized in a place like this with guys you don't know in just a scene like this and he was like, yeah, of course, I want to do it. And, we end up doing it down there, and I just remember thinking to myself, why are you doing this? And I was just like, I'm, I'm so tired of just living how I used to live and tired of being selfish. I'm tired of you know, only doing things for myself, only doing things to what's best for me and looking out for myself when this world is just so much bigger than me. And there's just like a feeling that this is right. And that, that's something that it just, you fall asleep so easily knowing that you're doing what you feel is right and that you think that God is doing for you, so. Without Lipscomb, I would not be who I am today. Growing up, church, church was something that um, was not, we didn't go to church all the time. You know, it was something that was a family issue. My mother was a very big Christian and uh, my father was not. So coming here, Coach Bennett was like, a father figure to me and he really he really went out of his way to make sure that we knew how important it was to have a good Christian education it wasn't just about basketball every day was a lesson and he showed us that if we put faith in everything we do we can do anything we want he always told us if you put yourself around people that make good decisions and that are successful people and it's gonna help you make the right choices and be successful people. And I think that's what he and Coach Meyer did. They chose people that they knew were gonna be able to come in and be successful and work hard and really believe in what Lipscomb is, which is ultimately to make a better place, to make better people. Without Lipscomb, there was no Marcus Bodie. Lipscomb gave me many opportunities an opportunity to be on this campus and to see how life can really be. Coach Meyer just would say, if you came in, you work hard, you have a chance to play. But you'll play on a winning team and you'll learn about basketball, you'll learn about life. You know, and, and it was that simple, but it was the look <laughs> that he gave you, you know, and, and it was a serious look, but it also was a, a look that I will take care of you. He became a, a great father figure, a great friend, a great coach, a great um, motivator, a great um, mentor. I mean, I mean, he's, he's inspiring for the things that he, he did, he does, and he continues to do. I came up here a boy, and I, I grew into a man. Um, I learned about responsibility. I learned about being disciplined, about being respectful. Uh, I definitely learned about hard work and work ethics. Uh, being dependable, um, relying on you know my talent, and knowing that my talent is going to be able to carry me over certain obstacles, as long as I understand that hey, it was a gift.
from God. Without Lipscomb, I wouldn't have my degree. Without Lipscomb, I wouldn't have my job. Without Lipscomb, I may not have my life. I needed affirmation and somebody to tell me I was doing okay and, and, and something. I needed something so bad um, and I didn't know where to get it or how to get it. So um, I just, I thought I would just threaten to commit suicide. I don't know that I would have actually done anything that night, but that was kind of just, I didn't know who actually cared about me and what, what people thought about me. And I was so worried about that at that point that, um, that I was so interested, I just had to find that out. And had I not received the response that I received that night, it might have led to uh, a more serious uh, action later on. I just, I went to somebody and I said, I'm tired of, the way I've lived my life, I'm tired of living this way. I want to change this, and I want to um, I want to do things differently. And he said, "Have you made you know? I know you understand Jesus as your Savior, but have you made Him Lord and Master of your life?" And I said, "I, I don't think that I have. I don't think that that's something that I'm familiar with. I just you know thought He saved us, and I just thought that this was my problem, you know, and." You know, he led me through that and told me exactly what that was and ended up discipling me and showed me what it was to lock arms with other men and, uh, and be accountable to other men and um, pretty much shared the gospel. I'd never really understood the gospel all, you know, in its entirety. Uh, I, I knew about Adam and Eve and I knew that Jesus died on the cross, but I didn't know why. In that moment, I was just, you know, learning that and recognizing that all the things that had happened to me in my past and all the things that I'd ever done um, weren't my father's fault. They weren't my mom's fault. I mean, I was just a sinful person, and uh, whether I was born to it or uh, born into it or, or became a sinful person, it doesn't really matter. The fact was, is my heart was in a sinful condition, and I needed a savior. And um, so I, I just, I was radically changed and transformed. For once, I just saw true clarity. Just the grace of God hit my life, and things just started changing. And um, I just. It, I, every morning I just get up and I literally, I thank, I thank God for, for that moment. I thank God for what He did for me to be able to have that moment. Without Lipscomb, I wouldn't have come to know Christ. I wouldn't have found the relationships that I found. I wouldn't have found my husband. At one point at the age of 16, I um, found myself uh, in a scenario where I ended up having an abortion. and. It was devastating and it was defining. It was a defining moment for me. And um, in a lot of ways, Satan knew exactly what he was doing with that. And so I was still very driven, but the self-loathing that came from that is like none other. So I went up to a mountaintop in Washington State and I overlooked all of Oregon. So I was looking out all over the um, wheat fields of Oregon and just went up to the top of that mountain and just started praying um, for hours and hours. And I wept and just begged and pleaded for God to tell me what to do. The very next day, I got a call from Jeff Spivey, the Lipscomb volleyball coach, and uh, left me a message saying, I have a scholarship for you. I've been trying to find you and uh, we want you to come. And so I loaded up my car two weeks later with what I could fit in it, my Bible, and headed down with my brother in 1997 and um, headed down and two months later I met my husband. Uh, two months after that I was baptized into Christ, ironically the same month that was my abortion, even the same day actually that was my abortion. Four years earlier I was baptized. For the longest time, for nearly a decade, I stuffed that. That wasn't anything I spoke to anybody about. I had every barrier and every wall you can imagine. And I'll never forget coming into volleyball practice the first day. And I was fierce. And I came from a, a background of very, um, very fierce coach. And here's Jeff Spivey who is loving and kind. And he, he uh, walked with me out from practice in front of the old McQuitty. And he said, you hit with so much anger. I hope there's none in your heart, too. And that was the first time someone had examined me, had had a level two, level three com conversation with me. And 
that began a relationship and a friendship where he cared. It has taken me determination to face my demons. It has taken me courage to tell my story. For anybody to tell their story, it takes courage. My brother, who was my hero, um, was killed in a motorcycle accident five years ago, Wednesday, and here in Nashville. And without the peace that passes all understanding, without that firm foundation, um, it's as though Lipscomb, God knew Lipscomb could prepare me for facing that. And being spirit-filled and having Christ in my life is what has helped me survive that. Not just survive, but thrive from that experience. Um, being pregnant at 16 was a defining moment. Finding Christ was a defining moment. Losing my brother's been a defining moment. But coming from um, a place that wasn't pretty, that wasn't polished, I have a strong passion for telling my testimony, for not being surfacy, for being real, for speaking truth, for, for owning every bit of where you've been and what God has taught you in it, and that everybody has a testimony. I just really feel like I thought I was coming to Lipscomb for volleyball and for athletics when really God knew all along He was bringing me here to give me life.